the BBC, the BBC kind of is. If you were starting from here, I don't know whether you'd necessarily invent it, but the fact is the BBC is a central player in our TV, radio and online environment. It's widely valued by, you know, many millions of people. The BBC yesterday was able to say that 97% of the UK population made some use of the BBC uh, in the course of last year. That's up from 96% the year before that. So, look, it's a central player in the game. Uh, its news services are widely respected both at home and abroad. And you know, it is, in that sense, the national broadcaster. Does that amount to an argument to say that we absolutely have to have it, otherwise the world falls in? I'm not sure. But it is what it is, and we are where we are. What do you say to those who say that it overserves white middle class over 55-year-olds, uh, so it looks after the rich and it doesn't particularly serve very effectively the poor and the young? Well, that, that's, a, that's a fair criticism, and I think, in fairness to the BBC, they would, they would probably take that on the chin to some extent, uh, because, uh, but they do their very best, I think it's fair to say, uh, to extend their reach beyond that. I mean, all television stations, nearly all television stations, certainly all mainstream TV stations, Sky, I think I could include in this, will find that their viewing skews older uh, and so on. Uh, th that's just, that's in the, just in the way of TV. I mean, the BBC faces the same challenges as everyone else in the sense that, you know, consumer behaviour is changing, especially amongst the young. Keeping up with that, you know, is a, is a major job. But, you know, and, and everyone is trying. I think the, the critical question about the BBC, I suppose, as the charter review process you know, starts, starts off in earnest, is what kind of BBC do you want? Do you want a BBC which is sort of, broadly speaking, sort of like it is now, doing something for nearly everybody? Uh, it, it's big, it's central and all the rest of it. Or do you want a BBC which is smaller and more restricted and more confined in its ambition and doing more of, if you like, what the market doesn't? That's the way the debate appears to be shaping up, or rather, in fairness, actually, that's the way the BBC is trying to shape the debate, pointing at their opponents and detractors. I think Tony Hall, the Director General, said yesterday he called them ideologues uh, and accused them of being commercially self or, or being commercially self interested and said that they were hugely at odds with the public who he said wants something from the BBC, uh, want a BBC rather, which is roughly speaking sort of like it is now. Very different landscape though, isn't it, from its original mission statement to educate, inform and entertain. What do you think it should do? Well, look, I mean, as I say, we are where we are and it is what it is. I, I don't know, I think, I think my life personally would be the poorer, not because I do bits of work for them, but I mean, as a consumer, <laughs> I think I would be worse off without it. And also, if you're looking for the kind of centre ground here, it, even in the Conservative Party, I mean, the Chancellor, when he appeared on Andrew Marr the other weekend to talk about the raid on the BBC's licence fee to fund government welfare policy and over 75 licence fees, even he said that although he thought the BBC had imperial ambitions in the online space, was causing real difficulty for newspapers by populating parts of the market which w was preventing them from making a living, whether that's true or not, uh, hold tight, but nevertheless that's what he said. He went on to say that he thought the BBC was a central part of British life, vitally important to Britain's position in the world, and even he thought the BBC should be, should be doing things like uh, strictly come dancing. So he, what, not even he was suggesting that it should be radically reduced in size or scale. There are people who do think that, but they, I think it's fair to say they are on the margins of this argument. Even the government seems pretty, pretty, pretty committed, I would say, to a BBC that is something like it is now. Uh, is it true, I, I read uh, earlier on today, among developed countries only Germany spends more than Britain as a share of GDP? Uh, on its uh, public service broadcaster. Uh, people who were watching this afternoon would, would presumably say, why should that be allowed to continue? The BBC uh, makes all these fantastic programmes that they sell around the world, including Top Gear. Why should we have to pay for them? Well, the fact is you, you do pay for them and that's how they get made. I mean, I mean it, it's, it's a bit jigging and egg, this. You, you, you wouldn't, if you didn't pay them, you wouldn't have the programmes. Well, not, look, the, the except market, that they, have, the they make quite a lot of money out of them, so they can use that funding to make other well, successful programming, yeah. presumably. Isn't that well, how indeed, it works? Indeed. Well, that is indeed what they do. And the a recent David Attenborough series, can't remember what it's called, 71% of the finance, they said, uh, came from elsewhere. So the BBC you know, plays quite effectively you know, in the market. But the, the, the fact is that it's the licence fee that pays for them. That's why they get made. I mean, I'm not saying that you couldn't imagine a circumstance where the BBC really wasn't there or was a much smaller player. But the question is whether Britain's creative industry, which is now glo you know, global market leading in some key genres, particularly factual programmes and the like, and get it starting to get there in drama, 
it, it's a huge industry. It brings in so it's 76 billion a year. It's a lot of money. The BBC sits right at the core of that. And one of the reasons all those people, the celebs, have written that letter to the Telegraph today, supporting the BBC, is partly because I think they can see, in terms of direct personal interest, that the BBC is critical to so many of the things that they do, even if they're not in and of themselves BBC programmes. Uh, increased technology, greater consumer choice as a result of digital. Is it, you would accept, presumably, Steve, a, a flabby organisation that no matter how much uh, the Director General uh, is kicking and screaming, he is going to have to uh, inflict a major haircut? Well, look, the, the licence fee settlement, which the BBC was crowing about last week, albeit done in secret, process outrageous, they said, but nevertheless, public excluded completely, I should say. They kept saying, well, you know, it's cash flat. Uh, the, yesterday, there was an acknowledgement from the BBC's Managing Director of Operations that it was at least a 10% cut. Now, the BBC's had the... Its license fee's been frozen since 2010. The BBC was saying privately, if not... And some of them saying publicly, that if it continued to be frozen, that would mean major cuts. It's now definitely minus 10, and possibly the OBR, Office of Budget Responsibility, said minus 20. But anyway, it's going to be minus 10 plus something. That's a very serious position for the BBC to be in. So whatever happens, you're absolutely right, uh, there is a haircut pending. Absolutely right. Steve Hewlett, always great to talk to you. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Boris Johnson's joining us, uh, MP for Uxbridge, uh, London Mayor as well, of course, uh, to talk about water cannon. Just while we've got you there, what's your thought on the BBC?